Now, Jean-Claude Trichet was the president of the ECB from 2003 to 11. He joins me now tonight from Paris. Good to see you, as always, uh, sir. The reality is, as a result of the election in Britain last night, European partners are under no doubt, can be under no doubt now, that the UK is going to leave the EU. And it really becomes a question of how to negotiate the best trade deal for the future. Absolutely. A clarification is so important after three years of total absence of clarity <coughs> on what was going on. So it's very, very understandable that uh, there is a lot of happiness, I would say, in many circles, because things are clearer. We know that we will eliminate no deal. We know that we are eliminating remain. And uh, things are, uh, again, very, very clear. That being said, of course, ahead of us, there is a negotiation of a trade deal. And uh, even if we know that it is not a no deal, of course, and not remain, of course, still uh, the negotiation is open and it would be a very, very important one. So I hope very much that it would be negotiated as professionally, as uh, I would say sincerely on both sides, and of course, as rapidly as possible, because again, uncertainty is the enemy. Even though one accepts that there can't be single market or full uh, access, because that would obviously uh, be, uh, be wrong if you're not a member, or how, do we stop, how do we stop the Europeans from wanting to punish the Brits to prove that being outside the EU is detrimental? I don't think at all that there is any such intention. It would be strange to have this intention because in any case, it is the British decision that created a cost. The cost will be borne, of course, by the British, largely because, because of the size of their economy. But uh, the rest of Europe will be also punished. So there is no such things. I mean, we have to find out the best possible deal, in my opinion, without punishing everybody, but knowing, of course, that the simple decision of the UK created a cost for all of us. Main cost, largest cost, of course, for the UK, taking into account its own uh, GDP dimension. But for all the others, also there is a cost. Right. And the cost will be borne by the 27. I regret very much, as you know personally, I yes. regret very much that decision. I know that half of the UK also regret that decision. Uh, we are all losing in this decision. That goes without saying. But to present that of now a punishment on the UK does not fit at all with what is going on. Certainly not. The ECB under new management, as they used to say, and yesterday, Christine Lagarde did her first press conference, or this week she did her first press conference, and she had to have her first meeting. It's early days, of course. Um, but this idea of a strategic review of the ECB's mandates and, and procedures, what would you like to see come out of it? Well, first of all, it's not a strategic review of the mandate. It's a strategic uh, review of the way, I would say, the ECB has to apply its mandate, taking into account many changes, of course, over the last years. So I think it's important. It is what uh, the U.S. Fed is being, uh, has uh, started also, and uh, uh, I think it's important. We will see exactly. There are a number of points which, which are important. How do you judge the non-conventional measures? Are they transitory or are, are they permanent in some respect? Uh, second, how do you deal in the medium and long run right. with the 2% definition of price stability? And that, that's also very important. And of course, you have how do you communicate to the governments and sure. the parliaments so that they have themselves not, not to let the central bank alone? And that's important. Right. Finally, sir. Has the earthquake subsided at the ECB that it's not a PhD economist and a former central banker and a, 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 a top banker who's got the job as the ECB, but a former finance minister and a politician? Has the, is the earthquake over? Well, I would say uh, the first education 
of uh, Christine was uh, a lawyer education, exactly <laughs> like Jay Powell. And oh. uh, from, from that standpoint, you have a similarity, similarity. And then she was, uh, during the first five years of her term, yeah. at the helm of the International Monetary Fund. Monetary is in the IMF acronym. And uh, she's been reappointed with the satisfaction of the international community. So yeah. I don't think there is any point in challenging her skills. Absolutely. Good to see you, as always, sir. Thank you, and have a good Christmas and a good New Year.